I think um, obviously the perception of Haitians is very similar across the world. But as we know, there are two very important factors behind floaters, which are aging and myopia, and specific populations, especially in Asia where you have lots of myops, that might be one of the factors behind high rates of floaters. Plus, in countries like Singapore or Japan, where you have high or long life expectancy, then significance of floaters, especially y strings or similar floaters, small, dense floaters might be much higher than in other countries. What are some of the treatment options that doctors in the Asia-Pacific Asia Pacific region do for floaters now, and why would a product that the LX has help them improve uh, their treatment options? As with the rest of the world, it has long been believed that the only treatment for floaters is a vitrectomy operation, which has high risk, high cost. Therefore, patients were just told that floaters were a nuisance, that they had to live with them, and unless it was disabling to their career, that an operation would not be warranted. So with the advent of the reflex technology from LX, we have a very different capability with a non-surgical safe modality. What advice would you give um, ophthalmologists in the Asia-Pacific region about uh, a very successful approach to treating floaters? First, I would say, if you're just tired of saying, do nothing or live with it to your patients, and you're just afraid of complications of vitrectomy, then right now you have a very successful alternative, very safe treatments with extremely low potential complications and extremely high end technology. The combination gives you a chance of uh, treating both very small and dense floaters and spread or bigger clouds. So extensive possibilities of treatment. Obviously it's not a treatment for everyone, but just because of high optical quality of LX lasers, uh, coaxial illumination, which gives you perfect view both for anterior segment floaters and back of the vitreous, uh, for me it became one of the most important add-ons to my practice as I'm a cataract refractor person. So psychologically too, it, it, takes, it takes a lot of convincing to change the thinking of an entire specialty that has gone on unchanged for many decades. And once you've experienced the capability of the technology and the effectiveness of it, it is, it is truly tr altering in terms of the way you conceive of your practice. So why are floaters um, going to be, become more prevalent with, with the aging population? Is, there, is it an aging type of problem or is it related to something else? I think it's both. Plus, the understanding of patients is different. The expectations of patients regarding quality of visions, of vision is getting different. So uh, 20 years ago, a patient who had 70 or 80% of vision was considered to be extremely happy. Right now, our patients have 100% patients have of vision, and still they are unhappy just because of small add-ons to their, to their visual field. And this is what actually we're trying to do. If we're proposing multifocal lenses, and, uh, and the patient is suffering from a small piece of material in, in uh, his or her visual field, then we want to improve their quality of vision to, to see much better. And that was the main goal of the procedure, just to have a simple, safe, and reliable procedure here. Gentlemen, thank you so much for giving me your time and have a wonderful meeting here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.